And we're back. Hey, it's Brett, Useful Aircraft. So, we were dealing with a saga of these. These are the pancake motors. I don't know if you remember, I had a couple of these things that landed in my lap from a hexacopter that someone had donated to me as nothing more than a pile of spare parts. These motors are amazing. They're remarkably efficient for what they are. But to be quite honest, they're not really built for the size airplanes that I tend to build. My builds tend to be limited to a single sheet of foam board. These motors, they're not really suitable for that. But I was dumb enough to say, let's give it a crack anyway. The problem with those is they turn these. This is a 15 and a, yeah, 15 and a half inch by a five inch pitch prop. This is a carbon fiber one. You can take a look. You can see it's a pretty mean little beast that will be quite happy to take your finger off and go all the way through the bone, most likely. Those are uh, a little terrifying when you mount them on the nose of a single engine airplane. And as you remember, I took that, managed to get it flying, take it up around the patch and brought it in the landing. Not satisfied because some folks called me out and said that wasn't a clean build. No, obviously it was not. These, air, these props and components don't belong on my scale of airplanes. I decided what the hell, let's give the haters something to think about. So I doubled down. And that's where we came up with the first twin. The uh, twin that I built was a conventional twin. It was based off of one of these designs. Something similar to that. What I ended up with was a monstrosity where those giant propellers that scare the living daylights out of me were turning just inches away from my head. First flight didn't go so great. Like I said, this quad before me, it had a rough life. There's been a um, handful of parts that I scavenged from it, namely the ESCs, and um, I got an ESC that was bad. As soon as I powered it up for takeoff, and, and it's odd, I honestly think it's something that was only uh, showing itself under load because uh, on the bench and without propellers on, it was spinning up just fine. In my hand, doing limited run-ups, did a handful of those, same thing, spun up symmetrically, everything was fine. Shortly after my very first toss though, however, that motor appeared to have come offline. Um, no telemetry data, nothing like that of merit, no flight controller recording any, uh, you know, uh, IRU data. So no idea exactly what went on there. But um, either way, the airplane ended up hitting the ground and coming to pieces. Undeterred and figuring out, you know, it, it was probably just a bad ESC, I built a second airplane, same style, conventional tractor twin. Took it out and gave it a toss. At the end of the day, that flight didn't go so hot. And it is probably something I should have seen. You know, these motors have some heft to them. Um, let's get an exact weight on that. According to the scale, the motor weighs 115 grams. Throw the propeller on it, 131. So you got a pair of those turning furiously and you're trying to hold this airplane about like here. No landing gear. It's not taking off from the ground. My airplanes for the most part, we end up chucking them with few exceptions. There are actually some that have gear on them. So anyway, uh, I took the second airplane out and gave it a toss. Center of gravity was right. I'd flown the airframe before. I knew where the CG belonged. The wing had plenty of induced flow. It was honestly doing great. I had great roll control. What I did not have was sufficient elevator, sufficient pitch control. The problem was the free stream air flow over the tail was not significant enough in order to provide a pitching moment to lift the newfound weight on the leading edge of the wing. So again, despite the center of gravity being fine, despite the wing having enough airflow over its entire surface that it was getting all the uh, roll authority that we wanted. By the time that airflow moved back to the tail, the airplane with a hand toss just wasn't moving enough air past it in order to increase the angle of attack and fly level and fly away. So the airplane went a little bit farther, nonetheless hit the ground again. So I was a little bit curious. I was, I was dumbfounded, you know, what, what the hell do you do? Um, and then it came, came to me. I thought back to uh, airplanes that I fly otherwise, my FPV airplanes. Let me show you one of them. This is one of my favorite designs. This is something that uh, I'll get more into building and whatnot and some of the future work with it. That's one of my uh, FPV pushers. That's another one. Hell, actually, if you look, there's a stack. There's even a third one up there. All of those are ready to go. This one up here, if you look, even has a pan and tilt assembly to it. So they're great airplanes. I really love them. They fly well. They do everything nice. And I thought about that. The beauty of those is that the 
ailerons, or in this case elevons, are in the induced flow of whatever's on the leading edge of the wing. Now I build those typically as a single engine pusher, and I like it that way. It's elegant, it has a low parts count, you're talking one motor, one ESC, you got two servos, you know, a flight control board uh, if you're running one, or a receiver, and that's it. But instead I came up with this beast. This was V3, and by this time I was done with that project. V3 is nothing more than my FPV plank, still configured as a single basically. That's where the pusher motor mount would go. That instead is the ELRS antenna sticking up behind the um, behind the vertical stab. So ESCs live back here basically. They run, you can see the wiring is following the leading edge of the wing coming in to the fuselage there. ESCs are back here. The ELRS radio is all the way aft. The antenna is the last thing on the airplane. You can see it sticking out there. The uh, servos I wanted to make sure I had plenty of authority. So the servos live literally mid-span of the wing, just after the motors. Uses my new style control horns, which you can see here, if we can get it to focus, there we are. And um, a couple of uh, popsicle stick spars, these guys here. But also, this build incorporates a uh, mid-leading edge KFM cut. What does that mean? You can see right here, that line. That cut line allows us, and I've done this with some of my other, um, some of my other builds, to fold over the wing segments when the wing is being built in this position, like this, to fold over four segments of wing versus two. So again, to show you, I fold over this portion of the wing and this portion of the wing to form the leading edge and then I do the two center sections of the wing. The smaller fold areas make it easier to manage the fold and ensure quality and make sure it's actually tight. And you hold the, uh, you know, some weights down on there and you get a really nice finished surface. Same thing, I laminate my popsicle sticks inside the, um, inside the wing. These three are vertical to help carry the load. And then there are two horizontal popsicle sticks that are mounted at this fold that are buried actually in the leading edge, inside there, laying flat. And in doing so, they help to uh, absorb any load that otherwise could cause stress fractures along these fold lines. Because stress loves to follow any straight line, so you need something in order to spread that out. And that, those popsicle sticks help tremendously. Other sticks, you have another uh, mid-span aft here. Um, you got this at the, closer to the trailing edge of the wing. This forms your tail skid, also goes up, helps keep your rudder straight. And then this guy here with the uh, half series of stabs that I run back on the tail. So this was the airplane. It was, uh, it was sketchy nonetheless. It's still not my favorite airplane. These prop tips, when you look at it and you throw, you can see, here's the tip of the propeller, there's my skull. Even if you extend it out just a hair, it's still not a lot of room. That's a little terrifying when you throw it. So quite candidly, in this scale and in this size, this will be the last build with these, uh, with these motors. But nonetheless, I took it out, and here's the flight video. Flight control check. CG check. Control throws. No time like the present. Well, first and last flight, pancake motor. Let's see. It flies. Son of a bitch.
Holy shit. I'm so glad I'm so done with this project. Taking it. Dude, that's the pancake motor. It flew. I am fucking done with it. Yeah. Motor mount broke on the left side. Actually, it looks like it pulled cleanly off. The right side still looks okay. We're disarmed. Flight controls. Let's give them a check. <laughs> it broke but you know what just like the spruce goose fuck that i am done <clears throat> my friends we flew it not well but we did there she is as you can see it took a bit of a toss, but the airplane tracks straight and true. I had checked the center of gravity. I already knew my planks. I knew where the CG lies. The CG lies just in front of these, the fold over here. And I'll put some marks on builds going forward so I know that exact. The um, Elevons needed a couple of degrees nose up. That's literally what I went with. You can just see there, it's probably uh, two foam board widths nose up on uh, the trailing edge of the Elevon versus the uh, aft taper of the fuselage line. So, airplane track straight and true. I had quite a bit of Expo in. I had, uh, I think my Expo was, and I can check this out, 75% uh, Expo, so I didn't know what sort of control motion that I'd want. But this way, this way I was sure that uh, I had all the control throw if I needed it, but at the same time, I had fine control in the center throws of the stick. So indeed I was running uh, Expo of 75 on the ailerons and an Expo of 50 on the elevator mix of the elevons. So it was uh, total weight of the aileron throw was 50%, total weight of the elevator throw was 75%. So again, 50% movement from in ailerons, 75% movement in terms of its weight for elevator. That was the mix I was using for these elevons. Airplane was controllable. Airplane was nice, you know, but after building three of these things and not being particularly in love with it, took it around the patch. The winds were kicking up. It was starting to get some high altitude turbulence that wasn't making it a whole lot of fun. And then people were coming into the park and it was just time to put her on the ground. So that's exactly what I did. On landing, I broke the motor mount. I broke this side. There's no way not to hit a propeller when it comes down. Um, you know, I tried bringing the props to stop, but at the same time, it just didn't, it didn't hold true. So we drug a prop. It did not break the prop. I was happy about that. And uh, the airplane came to a stop. That was it. What did I learn? I do like the pancake motors. You know, there's, there's certain efficiencies to these. They are remarkable in what they do. This one in particular, for example, is a, I can read it. 4108, 500 and, uh, 580 kV motor. They are remarkably efficient. I mean, the amp draws and spinning a prop like this and the amount of thrust that you get out of it is really remarkable. Most of my builds, again, are coming out of quad motors. You know, 2205, 2300 kV motors are my bread and butter. For the smaller builds, you know, like the ones in this, these are uh, 1407. 30 or uh, 3,500 kV motors. These are tiny, but you know, to be honest, the sub 250 genre, I, it's fine. You know, um, I feel it's, I don't know. For me, the appeal is in the bigger airplanes and the FPV stuff. Um, obviously there's some regulatory turtles and involvement that we've all got to face and how you face that is entirely up to you. But what I really enjoy is the is getting out there with with an airplane that you can stretch its legs to some extent you can go explore things 
and take in the, uh, you know, the sights of wherever it is you're flying. So anyway, uh, you know, in future, I think I'm going to build some FPV airplanes. Maybe we'll cover some of that. But uh, this was a fun experiment. I learned something. These motors are going on the shelf for a little bit. They're going to sit around in the back of my head and haunt me, though, and I'm sure at some point we'll pull them out and do something because I certainly have more than, uh, more than a handful of them. If you have any ideas for that, stick them in the comment section below. It'd be much appreciated. I do want to say, first dude uh, reached out on PayPal and uh, threw me a few bucks. Man, that made my day. I was sitting there at uh, Russian River Brewing at the time, and, and that bought a glass of Pliny, and, and I'll say that that gave me the, one of the biggest smiles while I was sitting on the road. You know, it's great to see you guys uh, commenting and subscribing. Um, you know, I appreciate those going to the website and, you know, participating in, in terms of downloading uh, the plans that I have out for the micro drag queen. I don't know. i got to figure out what I'm doing with this whole thing going forward. But it meant the world to me that someone actually contributed and threw a few bucks. Um, stuff like that uh, keeps me coming back and, and makes me want to build more. So, I don't know. We'll figure out a path going forward. I'm also curious. Would live builds be something you'd be interested in? I uh, spend my, you know nights and weekends out here in the garage most often on my own building stuff and if it's something you'd like to watch comment ask questions as we go i'd be happy to do it tell me as well in the comment section below if that's something you're interested in otherwise i appreciate your time take care